All right, so now we're going to talk about how we can numerically determine the strength of an acid or a base. Now, contrary to popular opinion, reactions don't just go forward and continue to do so. There's actually what's called an equilibrium between the reactants and products sides of my equation. And equilibrium is just what it sounds like. It's a balance, if you will, but it's not necessarily right in the middle. My equilibrium can be over here, meaning that my reaction does not go very far forward towards products. The equilibrium point could be over here, meaning that I go further towards my product and I have less reactants left over. And that can be represented numerically by the symbol K. This K is going to be products over reactants. So our concentration of our products as compared to our concentration of reactants. Big numbers, 4Ks, imply that my reaction has gone far to the right. More products than reactants. A small K means this reactant number is bigger. My reaction has not gone very far. In the case of acids and bases, we're looking at dissociation. So how much has my acid or base dissociated? So our separated ions are over here on the right, and our cohesive acid or base is over there on the left. So first let's talk about acids, the acid dissociating constant. So this is an equilibrium, so it will be a K. So Using this equation up here, oh, you can't see it. This equation up here, we're going to do products, my two products, concentrations of, hence the brackets, over reactants. Now, a side note is that pure solids and liquids don't go in Ks. Water is a pure liquid. There's nothing else in it. It's just water. So that does not get to go in my K. Hence, its omission. And that gives me my Ka. A Ka for a particular acid is usually standardized, so it can be looked up. And again, the bigger the K, the stronger the acid. A bigger K means that we have shifted more towards this product's side, which is a dissociated set of ions. If you remember back to a couple of videos ago, we said that strong acids and bases dissociate completely. So the closer your K gets to 1 and beyond, the stronger your acid. So for a strong acid, you're wanting greater than 1. So K's greater than 1. Let me write that in the marker so you can see it better. K's greater than 1. I wrote that the wrong way. Yet, goofball. There we go. Can you tell? It's been a long day. Anyway, so for example, if we were to write the Ka for nitric acid in water. So I take nitric acid and I put it in water. Okay, on the opposite side, I'm going to have hydronium. So my water has picked up an additional hydrogen and that nitrate ion. So we have acid, base, conjugate acid because it picked up an H+, conjugate base because it lost the H+. So my K, can you still see that? Yes. My K, A, we said was products over reactants. Our products are these two guys here. So concentration H3O plus times concentration NO3 minus divided by reactants go on the bottom, but pure liquids don't get to go. So this calculation here would be my Ka for nitric acid in water. That's all for the acids. Now let's talk about the bases. So the base dissociating constant is going to be Kb, as one would expect. So when I put my base in water, 
Okay, now my water is acting as an acid. Here's my base. So, if this is my acid, my conjugate base has lost an H+, plus. my conjugate acid has picked one up. So, same principle. Reactants go on the top. Excuse me, reactants go on the bottom, products go on the top. Pure liquids don't get to go, hence why the water's not here. And we're looking for a Kb stronger, or Kb bigger than 1. Once again, gracious, I can't speak today. Because we want more products than reactants, more of those dissociated ions over here on the products side. So, hopefully that makes sense so far. Just to give you um, some typical strong acids and bases, these are the ones, just to get start getting you familiar with some of these, these are the acids and bases that are always going to be strong. So for any of these acids or these bases, you're going to be looking for big Ks. These are going to be well over 1 because you have so much more product than you do reactant, so much more dissociated ion than you have put together forms like this. All right, last bit for this video. Water also has a dissociation constant. So water also has an equilibrium going back and forth between the put together H2O form and that hydrogen and hydronium ion. There is a back and forth. It's called Kw. And Kw is, it has a set value. Like I said, these are standardized. And Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So let's think about Ks for a second. K is products over reactants. So since I have a small number here, that must mean that my reactant, my denominator, is much larger than my product, my numerator. So that means that water doesn't do this very much. And again, that should make sense. We also have a lovely little relationship between our Ka and our Kb. We can calculate them one from another because Ka times Kb will give you that constant of 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Our hydronium and our hydroxide concentration share that same relationship. Our hydronium concentration times our hydroxide calculation will also give you that constant of 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Well, that's all for acid strength and base strength for now. See you next video.